<laughs> Conrad Lucas is our guest. Uh, formerly, he was in charge of the Republican Party here in the state of West Virginia and once on his honeymoon stopped uh, his honeymoon activities for 20 minutes to be a guest on this show on short notice. Conrad, I am eternally thankful for that and grateful, sir. Well, it was an honor. <laughs> uh, that, I guess, Rob, thanks for having me on. I ran into Matt the other day. I thought, if Matt Harvey's an actual guest host, you guys are really scraping the barrel, so I should call in some time. It's the truth, too. Um, uh, you did run into, not, that, not that we're scraping the bottom of the barrel, that you did run into Matt Harvey, and Matt suggested you as a guest. What are you doing now these days, Conrad? Well, you know, a, a lot of things. Of course, you know, it, it's interesting you mentioned you know, one of the times I was um, had to call into the show because I was on my honeymoon and there was some breaking news here. We uh, now have a seven-month-old little girl uh, oh, at home. So that, yeah, so I, I guess I continue to go through these uh, life steps, and I always feel I need to update you. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Uh, and, and thank that, you. Who knows? Thank you. So, that, that may have yeah. come sooner had I not interrupted you on your honeymoon. My apologies for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm still paying for that. But there was big political news back here in uh, West Virginia, so I uh, had to be on call. So I remember, uh, and I did actually pay for it because I, I told her, I said, "Get," I said, "All right, I've got to, I've got to go uh, do some interviews and and, and um, worry about things back home. Just buy whatever you want." And then I saw my credit card a month later, and she did. So. <laughs> hey, uh, on a serious note, and, and Matt Harvey, while you're in Studio 2 as the Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney and a man familiar with the law in the state, uh, former state Supreme Court Justice and Senate President Warren McGraw passed away at the age of 84. Did your paths ever cross, Matt Harvey? No, it did not. Conrad, your thoughts? You know, uh, of course, prayers for he and his family, obviously, you know, uh, the, this is a, a time where uh, politics should be set aside. Uh, you know, he had, of course, a very long, lengthy, legendary uh, career. Um, and uh, I, I just had read that news a few minutes before um, calling in. So uh, prayers for his, his, his family right now. Uh, you are involved in doing some work with or on behalf of Frontier, Conrad, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I've been working. Yeah, I've been working for. Uh, they've been a client of mine for uh, a little while. I know that they've made um, some announcements on some building um, in Berkeley, Berkeley County yes. uh, fairly recently. Yes, fairly recently. Uh, this is a lightning rod company. I know in Berkeley County, when we've talked to folks about Frontier in the past, what are they doing to rehabilitate their image in the state, Conrad? And how are you assisting? Oh, yes. Yeah. Building a good product. What you're seeing is your Frontier Fiber um, is, of course, their their tagline right now that they're that they are advocating for and advancing is building gig building gigabit America. Uh, it's it's interesting whenever you see a Frontier Fiber come through um, an area, it the opinions of uh, customers changes quite rapidly. It's the best product on the market. It's interesting to look at a lot of the industry studies out right now in terms nationwide of that particular product itself and the speed uh, that it offers. Um, you know, I, I hate to sound too cheesy, but hey, I come from politics, so I will. But in many ways, it's it, it's a new frontier, um, and it, it very much is. So, you know, they're seeing a, a new approach, of course, to the, the building efforts. They've been pouring in hundreds of millions of dollars of private capital into the um, market, in, into investment so uh, the building that you're seeing is out of their own pocket not and it's not all you know with grants although a lot of that is for their public private partnerships and uh, it, it it's it's a completely different um, company than it had been after it emerged from um, its restructuring so uh, there's a lot of building right now in the eastern panhandle by frontier so I think folks are uh, will be changing their opinions if they haven't already we had a person on from Frontier, I don't know, maybe a month, two months ago, uh, and, and mentioning the fact that they were aware of their old image in the area and were trying to improve it. Uh, Conrad, was that a sincere message? Were they really aware of the criticism they had gotten and the image they had? Absolutely. And part of their approach has been meeting with elected officials um, and constituents and uh, customers um, in order to you, uh, they want West Virginians um, and people across across America in their service territory 
to watch their development and see uh, that they are listening to folks and see that they are uh, moving forward. And a lot of the feedback that they get comes, you know, in basic things like their pricing structure. They don't do, you know, long-term contracts anymore. Why? Because customers didn't want that. They like options. And um, they like, uh, you know, the all in, all-in-one pricing. They, But most importantly, the reliable and quick service. So uh, as their building continues, and of course, you know, building infrastructure in West Virginia and anywhere takes a while, but particularly here, um, I, I'll tell you just from my end, it, it's interesting because I hear from folks whenever they have issues here quite often. Um, and it, it's been interesting to see a lot of the issues I hear about um, switch from uh, from uh, service issues to now um, folks have issues because there's so much uh, frontier building happening. <laughs> but those are the kind of those are the kind of problems that I think are are are, are fine to hear about and resolve. Um, and that they because that means that there's uh, exceptional new service being built in their area. There is a uh, rumor, or at least a little underlying current of uh, concern about their funding. And, and I got a text that said. Uh, I heard they ran out of money and had to halt the project. Are they still funded? Uh, is the revenue stream still flowing here on this uh, building project in the Eastern Panhandle? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, it's a lot of the funds that are being built, you know, every project is different, uh, is, is straight from their um, private capital. Um, and they are uh, fiscally healthy, and uh, they are uh, moving forward uh, across West Virginia and America. Mr. Harvey. Mr. Lucas, I have it on good authority that you drink bath water. What? I do. I do drink bath water. Yeah, very specifically bath water. And from the town of Bath okay. and in jug. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was do. hoping that's where you were going. Right, right. I, I, yes, I do. And uh, straight from George Washington's bathtub itself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we're actually headed up to uh, the town of Bath uh, tomorrow for uh, a long weekend. It'll be... Um, my little girl's first trip to see her dad's old stomping grounds, and uh, she herself will get to go see. And we're going to refill the I, the jug you gave me, Matt, is um, <laughs> in my car because I'm going to take it and refill it uh, this weekend. You, you know, you can re, you can fill up your jugs of ba- of I call it bath water because it's in the town of Bath mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. of spring water. And when I ran into uh, Conrad a, a week or so ago, I I gave him a gallon jug of bath water. Mm-hmm. You just carry those around with you? No, well, I was down there. So, so when I when I travel to these conferences, I take panhandle items to to share with other West to panhandle Virginians. to panhandle. Yeah, <laughs> pander, <laughs> whatever, however you want to say it, pander. But no, and, and I knew that that Conrad you know, was from Berkeley, uh, excuse me, Morgan County, Berkeley Springs area. So I was like, hey, you want a jug of of uh, you know Morgan County water or or, Ber- or Berkeley Springs water? And everybody thought I was talking about moonshine. Sure. And uh, but and I, I think he was a little to. disappointed. <laughs> I was like, here, it's an actual bo- an actual bottle of Berkeley Springs water. So. Bath water. That's where. It so that's from. the bath water. But no, uh, Conrad. What? Any other updates from from some of the other folks that you represent in West Virginia? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I work you know, a lot in the um, education space, yeah, you know, as well. Uh, you know, again, of course, politics is way more fun than, than the corporate stuff I do on, 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 in many ways. But the uh, but, uh, the education space, so of course, a lot of news out of Charleston yesterday, um, and I think that uh, a lot of folks are going to be following, of course, the Upshur County um, school system situation, and as that evolves and news comes out, you know, from the state school board meeting. Uh, uh, yesterday, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, most a lot of the the, the folks that I um, I represent on the corporate side, it's just um, well, you know, <laughs> that's never as fun as as doing negative attack ads on uh, on, on on Democrats. <laughs> well, Conrad, how much money do you think is going to come into West Virginia this election cycle? Unprecedented, you know. It, it, what's going to be interesting, and folks, for anybody who likes political history. Um, Pay attention this year a lot because, you know, this this with, you know, let's say Joe Manchin runs. Let, let's say he does. This will be, you know, uh, this will be um, obviously one of the most expensive Senate races um, in the United States um, in, the, in, in to knock out Joe Manchin. But it's probably the last time in uh, my lifetime uh, when 
we will see this much money come into West Virginia uh, for an election because uh, we're just not going to have anything competitive in general elections anymore. You know, our federal races and our federal races for a while have been handled um, in primaries. Um, and that's now filter, filtered down, and we're a guaranteed Republican state. Uh, you know, if you think about just a short time ago in the early 2000s, up through 2004, we were still considered a presidential swing state. So you would see a lot of investment in the state. Then, I, you know, even going up through, say, 2014, when um, Shelley Capito first won her U.S. Senate race, there was a lot of investment here then because that was a uh, – Switching a seat from a Democrat held seat to Capito, of course, is a Republican. So there's a lot of attention, a lot of resources. And then, you know, looking at uh, 2018 when uh, when Manchin was last on the ballot and Morrissey just narrowly, narrowly missed. There was so much investment uh, here then, but this is going to be the last time where we see that level of money because. Presidential candidates aren't going to have to worry. We haven't had to worry about West Virginia for a while. Uh, you. Um, U.S. House candidates have, haven't had to worry about West Virginia in a, in a general election for a while. And after Manchin um, is defeated or abdicates or whatever happens after uh, 2024, there won't be a contested general election U.S. Senate race here for generations. So just pay attention and watch. And every TV and radio station owner uh, in the state needs to make a lot of money this year <laughs> <laughs> because they just don't foresee. Uh, That's a great point. The level of investment in general elections happening here um, any longer. You know, we're we're a state that will have gone from when I was growing up. Uh, all races of importance seem to be handled in uh, in May, but it was the Democrat primary that mattered. Now, in a couple decades, that's rapidly switched to it's now the Republican primary that 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 matters, and that dictates um, November. So. Uh, we, this, it, it's going to be a fun next 18 months um, in the state, but I'm going to say it might be the last time we all get to have as much fun on the political side for a while. Uh, and that's basically just because uh, voters, um, you know, for many years we were fighting, you know, lies about there being conservative Democrats um, out there. They were able to spend that because there aren't, but uh, we were able to spend that they were able to spend that there were that, that they were. So we had all these contested um, elections, um, but it's going to start getting November is going to start getting a little bit more boring uh, in West Virginia. So people can go and, and, and just look at the beautiful fall foliage because there just won't be as much um, uh, there won't be as many TV ads or uh, mailboxes won't be as full. So, but it, 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 it's cherish the time for those who like pol- <laughs> for those who like uh, in-state politics uh, because it's just uh, the next 18 months will be fun. But after that, I, I, it, it, it'll be a while before we see this level of attention again. But it'll Great just point. be re- Republicans turn their guns on each other. That'll be that's what he's saying. Oh, the well, Republican yeah. primary will be <laughs> where the action is. May is gonna, yeah, so the month of May is going to start getting a lot more bloody, but uh, but the but the general elections just aren't going to be um, aren't going to be what we've seen. Anti so The last ten years or so, where general elections have have really been contested here, um, yeah, it, it was a new environment for the state as we made the transition from Democrat to Republican. Um, but that this will be the last the last um, race of importance where we see that. Conrad, this is John Gilstrap. Uh, you know, I think the phrase guaranteed Republican state is is a very dangerous one to say out loud. It, it occurs to me, and I'm relatively new to the state, but for generations, uh, West Virginia has been a deep blue state, changed only recently. Don't you think there's a danger if, in fact, the Democrats cough up a moderate candidate? Are we going to see people flooding from from the Republican to the Democrat. It occurs to me that just looking at the timing, the the switch to Republican at the state level is more a rejection of the so-called wokeism than it is actually a buy-in to Republican conservative principles. What do you think? Well, I'll agree and disagree on a couple points. First, yes, the sentence, um, the, the phrase guaranteed Republican state is dangerous, and thanks for pointing that out. One should never take anything for granted. Um, ever. 
So if you're playing, if, if anyone's planning to vote Republican, uh, do it. Do it often. Get your friends to vote early. Vote often. Yes. So uh, we don't ever want to get lazy ever. So yes, you're absolutely correct in, in saying that. But I just don't think that uh, that there's going to be a scenario where, where I mean, what is a moderate Democrat anymore? I mean, what what is that? Like, you know, it's just not something that it's kind of this mythical unicorn out there. I don't know that you can have um, someone run as a moderate Democrat and be believable anymore. Um, but the transition that happened you know, in West Virginia here, you can trace it back pre the wokeism stuff. Although one could argue wokeism existed before we had that word, but the transition really started. I want to go back let's say late 90s. So you have Cecil Underwood win the gubernatorial race in 96 as, as a Republican. And then you have 2000 where George Bush won barely. But that's where we really started to see a lot of trends. Because they get Capito again, won the house race, her first house race in 2000. Bush won then. And that's where you really started to see the differences in the national parties uh, filter down into races here within the state, and people started to notice. Of course, it helped when you have had Al Gore being, you know, anti coal <laughs> very, you know, publicly. And uh, then you had, uh, of course, George Bush being very pro fossil fuels. So uh, you, you saw it, and it, the gas, the foot went on the gas pedal pretty hard. Um, in the 08 to 08, the post the Obama years, when things really started to uh, accelerate. And of course, during uh, the Trump years, uh, it just went even farther. So it's it, it, it's less of a recent transition, but the, the roots were there going back into um, the late the late 90s. Uh, so I I feel confident, and particularly. We're seeing it, you know, in, in the actual voter registration numbers itself. You know, I wish John Overington was on to give um, an exact account, an exact history of the um, year by year party registration breakdown. But we, Republicans started winning elections, even whenever elections of importance, uh, even whenever there was a two to one Democrat registration majority um, advantage for them. And now we're at a situation. Well, I think it was just two years ago Republicans took a plurality in actual voter registration numbers in the state, and that's continuing. So I think it's – we were winning voters ideologically, and then they felt comfortable registering our way. So – and that's, that's growing. So I feel comfortable in saying that we are – going to remain a strong Republican state, but you're absolutely accurate. I should have, I should have never said guaranteed because there's no such thing as a guarantee. Anyone who says that in politics um, could come up with 10,000 examples of where guarantees were wrong. Well, it seems like it's about as close to a guarantee as it is, uh, at least anyway, right now, Conrad. Uh, the state has a large... Well, I feel good about it. I, I, would, I would think there's good reason for that. The state has a large independent registrant uh, base as well. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know most, many, I shouldn't say most, but many of those independents are fairly conservative uh, in, the, in the way that they, they vote. And I, I think, you know, you made mention of the West Virginia Democrat, and I, I would have to take exception with one thing that you said. I, I think in terms of the, the West Virginia Democrat, uh, that was also a person who hunted, believed in the Second Amendment, still, still does, and was conservative socially. They may have been pro-union, but I th but they were relatively conservative socially. And when they looked at the National Democratic Party and the direction it was headed, I think that also coincides with when those folks went, that's really not who I am anymore. I don't know if I'm a Republican, but I know I'm not Nancy Pelosi. And, and I think that uh, really accelerated, as you said, during the Obama presidency, and they cut bait and ran. I don't know if those folks going forward are safe Republican votes, especially as the Republican Party continues to push further and further right. Uh, but I don't know that they have any avenue or pathway back to the Democratic Party as it continues to go further and further left. So I wonder nationally if this holds in conversations around the other states in the, in the country, Potentially, there's momentum for a third party, 
uh, somewhere along the way. You know, it, I saw polling data the other day on um, uh, Twitter, which, of course, is 100 percent reliable news. Story, <laughs> but 100 uh, percent. But I saw a poll that might have been legitimate. I don't know. But it, it, it showed the percentage of Americans that were willing to consider a third party um, nationally. And it was it was in the mid 20s, which is pretty substantial. But, you know, I'm going to have to harken back to I think this was a line from um, the show. I guess it's an old show now, The West Wing. Third party is absolutely um, the future of America. And it always will be, meaning <laughs> we're always going to talk about it. Yep. It's always going to enter a discussion. Um but it's just not viable. So, you know, you hear discussions uh, about, you know, how many successful third parties have there, have, have, have there been. They just don't, it just doesn't happen. There's not, uh, you know, there's not historical precedent. Of course, we live in weird times. Anything can, anything can happen. But I think, you know, in America, uh, we are, we're in our camps right now. And if I can tell you if there's anything Republicans and Democrats can agree on, and they agree on it strongly, it's a two-party system. <laughs> so I think that uh, will remain in a strong two-party system. And when it gets back to you know, West Virginia, as there, at one point in time, there, there were those, those, uh, a good many of those Democrats who you, who you described. The, uh, the, there may have been the West Virginia Democrat, which was a, which was a bit of a distinction. But – those folks have either gone independent or, or become Republican because they just can't identify with the Democrat Party uh, anymore. And then you know, I think about who the Democrats are down West Virginia. Let's say um, you know, their party now is progressive. It is, um, it is no longer attempting to be uh, conservative, and they're, they're proud of being liberal progressives. You know, I, I think about some folks say um, – well, you know, I, the chair of the state Democrat Party, uh, Pushkin, right now, he would, he would, pr- he he would be proud of being a progressive, and not try to nuance things as 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 many folks on their side used to for a long time. Uh, but I, they are very proud of being uh, of identifying with the National Democrat Party. So that's the the change that's 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 happened on their side. We've seen. Conrad, good talk. It was great having you back on the program again.